Hey guys, Carrie Wedler here. I pretty much never make impromptu videos, but today it just feels appropriate because if you haven't heard already, hundreds of pages were purged from Facebook. They were political pages. To my knowledge, it was almost entirely political pages. And one of them was the anti-media where I have worked for four years. I'm editor in chief there now, I'm a writer. I've been with them a long time. And over the years, we've really gone out of our way and made it a founding principle to be a reliable and accurate an honest news organization. And that's not to say we don't make mistakes. We've certainly made errors, but we've made it a point to correct our errors and acknowledge them and to not be sensational and to just really try to be responsible. And so it really came as a shock today when we found out that we were banned because we've never been banned. Our page is just gone, uh, over 2 million followers, bye. Um, and we were also suspended from Twitter. I just found out I was suspended from Twitter. My personal account suspended. I got an email saying I violated the terms of service no specifics. I have no idea what they could possibly be talking about. I've never been suspended from anything ever. Like I, I was always kind of surprised that I'd never been banned from anywhere, but today it happened and the purge has begun. So I hope you don't mind. I have a list of things I want to talk about. I never do that, but I don't want to forget anything. And I do want to just get this video out because it just, I don't have time to write a video and be all meticulous about it. So the first thing I wanted to mention is that a lot of the outlets that were purged today from Facebook uh, were also listed in the Washington Post hit piece from November 2016 after the election when they were citing a shadowy anonymous group called Proper Not, and they claimed that we were useful idiots for Russia or we were intentionally being you know, uh, propagandists for Russia because we were advocating pro-Russian narratives. And the best we can make of that is that we're anti-war and we don't like US foreign policy. That piece was heavily criticized. Uh, Matt Taibbi from Rolling Stone called it out, Glenn Greenwald called it out, and eventually the Post had to retract it a few weeks later in a very half-hearted way. It wasn't even really a full retraction. Um, but yeah, it's not surprising that a lot of the pages that were mentioned in that article were purged today, including us, anti-media. And another thing I wanna mention, and that I think is really important, is that you're probably seeing a lot of reactions to this uh, from the people that it happened to and the people who are supporting them saying that they're being purged because they have dissenting points of view and because they're anti-establishment. And I do think this is true to an extent. I don't think we can prove to what extent, but I do think it definitely factors in, but there are two issues here. One, left-wing pages are getting purged and also pro-Trump pages are getting purged. And I know that a lot of you in my audience are very certain that Trump is anti-establishment. I uh, respectfully disagree. I think he's extremely establishment. I don't know that he started off that way, but he's certainly become that. So the argument that anti-establishment pages are getting purged and that's why doesn't hold water for me. But something else I am hoping people will be mindful of and conscious of is that a lot of the pages that are claiming it's because they're anti-establishment are also extremely irresponsible in the way they report information, if you can call it that. They built their followings through fear mongering and sensationalism and being totally just disregarding facts. And it's something that I've tried to call attention to in independent media for a while. I've been in this community a long time and people don't listen because it gets them traffic. So yes, there is definitely a factor of being anti-establishment and having opposing views and having that be part of the reason people are getting silenced. I absolutely believe that, though, again, we can't quantify how much of a percentage of the reasoning that is. But there's also a bunch of horrible pages that are not accountable for the way they present information and it's coming back down on them. I just have to put that up there because it's something that's frustrated me for a really long time. And something else that I want to mention and that I think really bears saying is that I think Facebook is doing this because they've been blamed so much for the election of 2016 and they're trying to save face and they're overreacting and they're overcorrecting because they're trying to prove that they can be trusted and that they're actually doing something. The elections are coming up. Every time I turn on the TV, which isn't often, like ever, I don't even have cable, but when I watch something and I stream it through a network, I watch This Is Us, I'm sorry, I don't even put it out there. So that's the only show I watch, but all of the commercials are for the election. All of my feeds are registered to vote. Everything is about this election. And Facebook is trying to prove that it can be trusted and that they're a reliable platform that's taking care of all the evil fake news. Because after all, it's fake news in the Russians. That's why Donald Trump, that's the only possible reason Donald Trump could have won the election in 2016, obviously. So Facebook is trying to save face. Now, hold on, let me check my notes real quick because I really don't want to forget anything. Um, I think I'm actually, I think I'm doing all right. Yeah, anyway, um, another thing I wanted to talk about is that yes, these are private platforms. This is not lost on me. I understand that as such, I'm on other platforms. I'm on Steemit. You can join me there. It's just at Carrie Weather. I'll put a link in the description. I should be joining Minds. 
I've heard about BitChute. That's something I'm going to look into. I'm also on Instagram. I realize that's owned by Facebook, but I haven't been suspended there. So at Carrie Wadler, I'll link to that. Uh, so far, that's been a good source of information. But as far as the private issue, yes, they are a private company, notwithstanding the fact that they are totally in collusion with government agencies. I've mentioned this in other videos. If you go to my channel, you can look at the other videos I've made on censorship. I've been talking about this since the Alex Jones ban. You can look into that. But as, again, as far as it being a private company, that doesn't mean we can't criticize its policies. This is the market. This is the free market. This is the marketplace. We can call that out. And the problem I see and what I said after the Alex Jones ban is that people are so intolerant of other beliefs that they're fine with censorship as long as it's shutting down views that they disagree with. And this is the biggest problem. So yeah, we can complain about private companies. We can complain about the government. I also did a video on the history of the government censorship and it's pretty serious. This is on my page as well. We can complain about those things, but it's really public opinion that's accepting of the censorship that's really gonna kill us off. So if you disapprove of this and you don't like it, be vocal about it. I don't know how much they're really gonna listen. I think that Facebook is far more willing to listen to hundreds of pages and their followers complain than they are the media calling them out for being responsible for Donald Trump. That's my opinion. But I also don't think that it's useless to say something. I think we have to say something and I think it's really the only thing we can do. But I just wanted to put that out there because I don't share fake news. I really try hard not to be sensational. I really try to be meticulous. And this isn't something I just go on and grandstand about and then I brag about, but it's something that's really valuable to me. I think it's so important to be responsible with information and I've made such a point of that. And that's why it's kind of baffling to me as to why anti-media and my personal Twitter have been suspended. Like this is, <laughs> this is really unheard of. This is not what I was expecting to hear today. And I sort of thought that I was in the clear as much as other people are being suspend suspended and banned. Yes, it's happening. And yes, I've been speaking out about it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised. I really didn't see this happening to me. Uh, but if you don't follow me on Facebook, I just wanted to put something out on YouTube so you guys could see uh, and just hear the update of what's going on. So again, uh, if this upsets you, please say something. Put it on Twitter. Put it on Facebook. Uh, it's really hard to like talk to these people because their ways of communication with them are just black holes. But please just make it vocal because... I was reading an article, I think it, it was either the Post or the LA Times, and it's just sort of a foregone conclusion that people have to be purged. Like the attitude is just like, well, you got to do something. And uh, yeah, I do think so. I think that in general, people need to be more conscious of the information they're consuming. People need to learn how to better into interpret news to check original sources. This is, this is basic stuff that people aren't doing. And it's part of the reason the fake news issue really is a real issue. And yes, it comes from the mainstream media, obviously, but it's also coming from these outlets that are getting purged. And we can't deny that. We can't act like the only reason they're getting purged is that they're anti-establishment. That is absolutely not the case. There's so much horrible information out there and we need to take responsibility for what we're consuming. But at the same time, I think it's really important that we stand up for people who are getting purged. Uh, Anti-media has issued an appeal for Facebook and I believe Twitter. I issued a an appeal for Twitter. I'm kind of hoping that we'll get our pages back. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. This is uncharted territory and we'll just have to see what happens. But I just want to give you guys an update. Sorry, it's a little sloppy. It's not really my style, but I did just want to get this out there and let you guys know what's going on. Peace.